I'm getting deep into the calculus of parametric curves now. I've defined tangents, their lengths, arc length, and the parameterization by arc length. I've accomplished a fair bit. I know about the instantaneous direction and rate of movement. However, I want to do more. What I want is a more refined set of tools for movement in space. I can think of three types of movement in three-dimensional space. Straight motion, fixed direction along a fixed line but a variable speed, Curving motion, restricted to some fixed plane, but curving and changing direction in that plane. And finally, twisting motion, curving in a plane, but also twisting away from that to curve in different planes. Together, these three types of motion can describe almost any movement in three-dimensional space. Think about flight. You can fly in a straight line, you can fly in a curve, or you can fly with some kind of twisting motion. And that applies to the flight of birds, insects, airplanes, etc. How is all of this captured in calculus? Well, I'm going to make a bunch of definitions in this video and the next that provide some remarkable tools to describe this motion. There is an important subtlety before I start. Some of the dynamics I define are properties of the curve itself, and some are properties of movement along the curve. That is, some depend on the rate of movement, but some depend only on the shape. When something depends only on the shape, I will use the parameterization by arc length to define it, since that is a unique parameterization and will always give a consistent answer. This turns out to be a pretty important theme or problem in multivariable calculus, having multiple descriptions for an object, and the challenge of calculating something that will work regardless of the description. I'll return to this problem later in the course. So, let gamma be a parametric curve parameterized by arc length. I'll always write the arc length parameterization gamma of s instead of gamma of t. Then recall that capital T of s is the unit tangent. One of the nice things about the parameterization by arc length is that its tangents always have length 1, because time and distance match up perfectly. So this capital T of S is just, in fact, gamma prime of S. Now, T of S is still a vector function with three coordinates. I can differentiate it. Its derivative is another vector depending on T. Finally, I can take the length of this new vector. That length is called the curvature and written with the Greek letter kappa, which looks like a small uppercase K. Now, I actually can calculate curvature using an arbitrary parameterization. Here, kappa of t is the length of the derivative of the unit tangent divided by the length of the ordinary tangent. I'll not give a proof that this always works, but it does work, and it does calculate the curvature of the graph. I've put this equation for curvature on the sidebar of this video for your reference. Curvature measures the curving of a parametric curve, how it changes direction, curving to the right or curving to the left. A low curvature is almost a straight line, and a high curvature is a very tightly turning curve. This can be compared with a circle. A unit circle has curvature of exactly one. For other circles, the curvature is the reciprocal of the radius. Hopefully this makes sense. A large circle has very slow curving. It looks almost straight if you sort of look at a piece of it. Therefore, larger radius gives small curvature. But a small circle is very tightly turning, therefore has a large curvature. Now let me do an example. First, this is a straight line parametric curve going directly in the direction ABC. It's a straight line, so it should have no curvature. Let me check the calculations to make sure that is true. First, I calculate the tangent. Then, I calculate the length of the tangent. The unit tangent is the tangent divided by its length. So here's the unit tangent, and then I differentiate the unit tangent. Though it looks complicated, everything here is constant, so the derivative is in fact zero. Finally, I take the length and calculate curvature as in the sidebar formula. I do in fact get that the zero curvature I expected for a straight line. Now let me calculate the curvature of the unit circle, which I claimed should be one. Here is the curve. Again, I take the derivative, 
Then I take the length of the derivative and calculate the unit tangent. Here, dividing by one doesn't do anything, and the tangent itself was already the unit tangent. Then I differentiate the unit tangent and take its length, and I divide the two lengths following the formula on the sidebar, and I find that the unit circle does in fact have curvature one. Finally, I can change the radius of the circle to A using this curve. I repeat the same steps, the tangent, the length of the tangent, the unit tangent, the derivative of the unit tangent, the length of this derivative, and finally the curvature ratio. I do find that the curvature of a circle of radius A is exactly the reciprocal 1 over A as I claim.